Hey, my name's Brian, and I started this channel called I See Dead People. Um, the YouTube short is at I See Dead People 365, as well as the uh, the Gmail, so you can get in contact with me, is I See Dead People 365 at gmail.com. In case you want to contact me, send me a story, um, or pretty much anything. It has to do with like ghost schools, spirits, uh, or what have you, Any, anything paranormal. Um, Basically, why I started this channel is because when I was three years old, I started to um, see things. And what I mean by that is um, I lived in a house. It was an older house. And we used to find a lot of, uh, like, arrowheads in the backyard. I was near a brook. So it had a lot of, I guess, older Indian activity. And... Uh, uh, Native American activity. So to kind of go into that a little bit further, um, we had a, it was an old well in the basement. And uh, I remember being a young boy and just like uh, hearing things coming from that well. Uh, and it wasn't just like the, like a, you know, a sump pump sound or a pump sound or anything else. I would actually kind of like hear voices. Um, basically kind of like calling out to me, like they, like they knew me. Um, then to kind of like expand upon that further, um, being a three-year-old, I, I remember vaguely remember being like in a crib and looking outside the, the back window and just like seeing, um, seeing like people in the backyard, which was kind of, kind of strange, but not strange because I guess when you're three and four years old, you're still developing. So I really didn't realize that I was, uh, seeing things that weren't per se normal to most people and to make matters even more interesting is my bedroom was next to my parents bedroom so it was like I, I was right next door to them but uh, my bedroom had an entrance to the attic uh, everybody knows strange things always happen in, in attics and basements and everything else um, but I ended up having a uh, what I thought was a real friend but people called imaginary a friend named Gomer uh, G O M E R. And, um, it was kind of weird. Like I would see him, I believe it was a, it was a young boy as, as well as I was. Uh, I would see him sometimes, sometimes I wouldn't, but we would play for hours in the attic. Now you would think that would be like an imaginary friend, but it just, just to gave, give some real, um, real things towards that. Uh, he would tell me about different, um, things that were in the attic that he had discovered. Um, you know, every family has uh, boxes and stuff and storage up in the attic, and but he would actually tell me where things were. Um, and it was it was kind of it was it was kind of weird. It was very um, looking back on it now and memories that that, that I've had that I've passed down through the years uh, since I'm uh, I'm over fifty now. And I felt it was time to like kind of like share some of these stories. Um, so these were things that I would take out and I would play with. And my dad would find them and be like, hey, where'd, where'd you get this? And it wasn't through discovery because I would actually be led by Gomer to certain boxes. And uh, there would be different items in there to, to, to play with and everything else. Um, and being three years old, it was kind of weird. Um I actually had a situation where um, Gomer led me to a, a box of one of my dad's old Playboys. So again, being around three, four years old, I mean, that's not something that you want to uh, have a three, four year old find, but um, it was something that it was, I was like almost completely led to this box that had some of them. Um, now being, being a young boy, I inherently knew, obviously there was something wrong with, uh, you know, flipping through the magazines and stuff. So it's not something that, you know, became habitual or anything. It was kind of like a one-time thing where, you know, uh, Gomer led me to the box. I opened it, discovered them, and I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't be looking at these things. So it was good that there was a good moral compass kind of instilled in me at a, at a young, young age. Uh, my mother was Roman Catholic, so, you know, we attended church on a regular basis. And um, so, yeah, I thought it was kind of perfectly normal to have uh, Gomer as a friend of mine um, as a young boy. 
and the only time I really realized it was weird is when I started going to school and interact with, interacting with other children that um, some of the stuff was kind of not normal. It was kind, kind of weird. And again, morally, I knew it was not something that I should openly discuss with uh, other children. I knew it was kind of like, uh, I, I guess if you want to see like a taboo subject. So I just like, I never talked about it at all. Um, so it's weird. Gomer was my, my, I guess, friend, you can call it for uh, a number of years while I was living at the house. And I had discussed it with my parents who, um, to my surprise, my mother had seen different things in the house, um, different like uh, spirits, ghosts, shadows. And my father, despite me and my mother being a, you know, Roman Catholic, my father was pretty much an atheist. He didn't believe in anything. He didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in ghosts. He didn't believe in spirits. But I remember he had constructed this den, uh, built a pretty, uh, like from the ground up. He was actually a, a remarkable carpenter. Um, not his profession, but just like something he did as a hobby. And he built this, this den out of kind of like a, uh, kind of like a dead room. He kind of like split two rooms to make this little, uh, like, like den where we put a little TV in kind of like a little lounge area. And I remember him coming out of the room and, uh, he was, what is a ghost? I mean, you know, using the phrase ghost loosely, but he came out and he was so pale, like he had seen something in that room. And I, I kind of briefly remembered a conversation that I had with my, uh, you know, my, my parents at the time. And, uh, you know, my mother was talking to him and he was talking to her. They were talking about how they had seen, um, you know, he had seen something there. And then she had discussed that she had seen um, things in the house here and there. And it just became a... a, a uncomfortable conversation between the two of them and when I started discussing more with them about things that I was seeing seeing that I was seeing in the attic I remember they walked up there with me and they investigated heavily um, for one thing my dad thought maybe somebody had gotten into the house and was kind of like living in the attic the way I was describing it was like so real in such a real situation so obviously no one was discovered but it was just it was just the beginning of, uh, I guess, a lifelong uh, journey for me as to, I I mean, I see dead people. You know, it's just a, uh, almost like a natural thing for me. Um, I see dead people uh, everywhere, not all the time, obviously, but I do see them in various settings. Um I know when we've gone looking at houses and real estate over the years, um, I always can sense if there's a presence in the house as well as sometimes I can actually see a presence in the house. And I guess right, right around when um, uh, I turned 40 years old, I had a more of a, uh, I guess I want to call it like an awakening um, experience where um, now I started having uh, vivid dreamscapes of being able to have uh, conversations with, uh, with the dead, which is kind of a hard thing to explain to the people. And uh, now, as I get into my, my early 50s, uh, they become more, I guess, pronounced. Uh, the dreams, uh, visions, as well as... Uh, seeing types of people just uh, just in everyday settings. I mean, I can get to more stories as uh, as this, this channel expands and goes on, but I just figured it was something that um, I would start and I would start sharing stories because it's something that uh, I think that should be shared, should be discussed. Um, uh, and, you know, in my dreams, I have uh, pretty interesting, sometimes in depth conversations with uh, you know family members and friends that I know ha that have passed away and I know it's it's in it's it's a it's a weird subject it's it's hard to discuss with people and it's something that um, I don't know I, I, again I it's hard to explain 
um, growing up with it from my earliest memories, it doesn't seem abnormal to me because it's just a, uh, it's like an everyday thing. And like I said, when I hit my 40s and 50s, it's, it's accelerated to a point where um, I'm very sensitive to uh, paranormal type activities that are around me. Um, seeing things, being able to, to sense spirits and ghosts and whatever you want to call them, um, you know, in houses, out in a real world. Um, I see them in crowds of people. Um, we're down in, you know, the Orlando area. Uh, this is why I'm actually filming this. And I can see them in crowds and it's hard to describe, but I know when I see uh, an apparition or a ghost that they are uh, not normal, um, just regular alive people. I obviously cannot, I can separate it. I've been able to separate that from an early age. And I've never really had them reach out or contact me in, in any way um, until I started getting to my 40s and to my 50s. And now, um, and I guess that's why I'm, I'm like started this channel and I started to share these experiences because uh, I've had people, um, dead people, reach out to me when I'm in their presence. And it becomes, uh, you know, it's a lot of times it's as simple as um, they become aware that I am aware of them. And they try some sort of uh, communication uh, via... I mean, it's like a spoken word, but it's, you know, I, I, this is, this is where I get kind of fuzzy with it as well, because it's like, um, I can hear them speak, but I don't know if it's just like internal as I'm viewing them. Obviously people around me can't hear them speak, but I, I can hear the, the, their spoken word. Um, and I've seen some people that are, um, obviously, uh, may or n may not speak English, and I'm able to comprehend and understand uh, what they're saying. So I don't know how that transition of language transforms, um, and I guess in the, in the ghost and the spirit world. So it's uh, you know it's an it's an it's an interesting development in my life, and um, it was time to share and just uh, I guess you know uh, found out my life's purpose. You know. Just recently, not, like not too long ago, uh, I'm here to help people. So that is my my primary focus um, on everything and anything that I do. And with my YouTube channels, I have a couple of YouTube channels and are basically showing different uh, product reviews, tool reviews, how to fix your car, this and the other thing. And, uh, you know, that's another interesting experience is um, uh, my father passed away a few, uh, more than a few years ago. And I mean, I've always watched him work on cars, but he always had a thing, uh, children should be seen and not heard. So I did a lot of just watching him just work on cars throughout the years. And again, his primary profession was uh, he was a, a researcher and he, he developed different uh, plastic type products. So like he wasn't a car mechanic. He wasn't a carpenter. Um, he was a definitely a guy. He did a lot of different things. So I guess there was a certain amount of, um, I, I call it osmosis, absorption through the skin of just watching him fix and work on um, houses and vehicles and everything else that somehow I knew how to to do all this stuff, but I didn't know how to do this stuff. Uh, never really worked on my cars, uh, never really did any woodworking, but as soon as my father passed, I started getting these visions and these, uh, I guess, re revelations on how to uh, fix uh, almost anything, um, how to build almost anything out, out of wood and woodworking. And I really didn't own any good tools until he passed. And then I started buying different tools, woodworking tools, mechanic tools, everything else. And it was just like, I just knew how to use them. But not only how to use them, but how to use them competently and with woodwork, woodworking in great detail. Um, you know, and that wasn't something that could be explained. Can you get all that from watching somebody over the years? I guess. I guess you probably could. But the way that I would get 
these things. Like I, I rebuilt a bathroom from the, the floor up, uh, cabinets, you know, a mirror, the whole nine yards. I do have some YouTubes on that, so you can check that stuff out. But from scratch, I like had zero knowledge on how to actually do this. And I think that the, the, the stuff came out great. And in fact, it's so good that people don't even comment on it because I never tell them that, that I built it. And um, I usually get a comment of like, hey, where did you buy that, that cabinet? Where did you buy that, that sink from? And then when I tell them that I built it, they're kind of kind of floored because they just know my history that that's something that I never practiced firsthand. It was just something that I suddenly just knew how to do. And uh, to me, that was probably... Um, I don't even want to use the word creepy, but that was probably one of the creepier things um, that I've had happen from this. It was almost like um, my father passed away and he like downloaded all this information into my head. It was kind of, kind of, kind of weird. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's, I mean, it's that simple. Like if you download something off the internet, you have the opportunity to, uh, to read it, to live it. YouTube, you get to kind of almost, uh, vicariously live through somebody else's vision, um, to be able to do something like that. Um, I went from knowing how to do that to automatically starting to make, uh, YouTube videos to basically, uh, share my knowledge, share what I know to, to everybody that's out there. And then part of that experience, that uh, after death experience I had with my father, it's it was just like something I was like, that's when I kind of discovered my life's purpose was to to help people. So, in forming this channel, basically kind of like the same thing. Uh, one, I guess to let other people that have these experiences know that hey, one, you're not alone. Uh, number two. You know, you hear things about like mystics and you know telekinesis and people you know talking with the with the dead and you know communicate to a living and what they hear and stuff. You know, I don't believe I'm at that point um, to be able to do that. Um, you know, like seance and you know all all that other uh, stuff that just people kind of get a little weirded out by. I don't believe I'm at that point. Um, but do I communicate with the dead? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, do I see, do I communicate with them through dreams? Yes, absolutely. Vividly. Um, and like just stories. And so this channel is basically just going to evolve around that, uh, stories that I have. I'm looking to have people share their thoughts, their stories, their comments with me. Um, so, you know, one, I know, and you know, we're not alone. And two, let's discover it together. And let's see if there's a possibility that um, I can help you somehow with, uh, you know, clarity, uh, you know, with clairvoyance, with w whatever you have going on. Um, communication with a loved one. Again, I don't believe I'm at that point yet. Can you give me somebody's name and, you know, picture or, you know, information and stuff and, can I communicate with them um, in a you know, dream type setting or if I'm there in person? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, it's unclear. You know, the future is unclear, but I do know that I've, I've communicated with quite a few um, people over the years that are obviously dead, not among the living anymore. And it's been a, a interesting, unique experience. And I think that's why I'm going to probably form this channel around is just those experiences that I've had and the ability to share that with everybody else. And then we can kind of uh, build upon that to together and we can discover, um, you know, what else is out there. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, thank you for uh, subscribing, which obviously will help the, the channel and communication build. And, you know, thank you for your comments. Uh, comments are what is going to help this channel evolve into, you know, a, a tool to, to, to help communicate uh, back and forth to, to everybody uh, living and non-living, I guess. Um, anyway, um, thank you for watching. Be safe out there and just know we're, we're here to help.